Hey guys, Picano here bringing you guys another GTA 5 video and today that we have the top 10 fastest supercars around my brand new testing track which is Spectator's Magic and the simple rules are, as you can clearly see on the screen we did 10 laps in total in each car, the wheel type were tuners, specifically Rallymaster wheels, the time was in the day and the weather was clear and the main purpose is to keep the same racing line throughout every single supercar to make it as fair as possible but this is a new series that I'm bringing I'm going to show the top 10 cars in this video top 10 supercars to be exact in this video and we're going to have the top 10 sports cars in a future video in the near coming uh, weeks for that video to drop but we're just going to get straight into it guys and let's go we have in 10th position the entity XF which sets a lap time of 1 minute 23.75 this is the 10th fastest supercar around spectators magic which is a track like I said I made a couple of videos in the past uh, on this when I first revealed this series coming along it's more of a track that requires speed carry you know you've got the first half of the track here as you can see you've got some sort of city based tight turns left right you've got that really really ballsy hairpin at the uh, the start and then the last half of the track is basically going through the mountains you know making a car not understeer because this section here is basically testing a car's understeer performance and you know trying to eliminate that as possible so the perfect balance and the entity is a really really strong car in the supercar class unfortunately the only thing it does lack is a slight bit of pace nowadays because the handling is fantastic as we know it's four wheel drive but it's a slight uh, bias four wheel drive as in more of the power is sent to the back rather than you know being a 50 50 distribution um but yeah it's it's really good but it can understeer especially in these sort of tight turns as you can see but it does set a really really respectable lap time and it beats some of the other supercars such as the 811 on there which actually didn't even make it into the top 10 next up we have the legendary turismo r the grotty turismo r which got a time of 1 minute 23.31 now this car is about handling this car is not about pure pace this car is not about acceleration or top speed because it doesn't really succeed in any of those categories you know it's not the best in acceleration it's not the best in top speed what it does deliver is supreme handling and balance this car is really really nice to drive on pretty much any track within the game right any track within the game this car is just a dominant car and it i think you know people respect it so much because it handles really nicely rear wheel drive car it can snap every now and again if you push it too hard but then that's what we like in the car we like it to be a bit unpredictable but it feels light it feels nimble it feels just like a you know like a house flight just wants to dart in and out of corners and um, bumps can upset it but at the end of the day if you control it with some throttle control you'll just be able to execute the car really really nicely and you know you'll still be able to compete with the more traditional supercars that you'll see in this video but the Turismo R, like I said, is the ninth fastest supercar around this test track here, which is Spectator's Magic. Like I said, I will be leaving a link to Bruffy's video because he does more of a city-based track testing. So it's always a good reference to get the two now um, on there. Up next, in eighth position, we have the FMJ, the sort of new supercar to come into GTA Online, which was released in June this year. The FMJ is basically how I see it as a next generation Turismo. Um, it's got supreme, supreme traction, um, pretty much more than the Turismo. It's dominant in airport races and where the Turismo doesn't have the top speed, this car has the top speed. Like It can pull away from near enough every supercar in the game, apart from obviously the later generation supercars that I will be demonstrating. But... Traditional supercars such as, you know, the Turismo, the um, Osiris and things like that, this car has got a supreme top speed for that. And with it being, you know, again, rear-wheel drive, it just handles really, really nicely. The amount of traction levels is on point. And it's just a really nice car. I actually made a video about this car, how it's actually worth the money because I think it is it what it's $1.7 million in-game, which, to be fair, for a supercar... Is real is not too bad, you know, considering that's actually worth it and it actually does feel nice, looks nice, 
um, and performs really well on a vast, uh, vast majority of tracks. It's really good. So it's the eighth fastest supercar in this track or on this track. And um, like I said, if you haven't got it already, go buy the car because it's absolutely bloody fantastic, mate. Up next, we have, again, another legendary supercar that broke the sort of broke the barrier from the Zentorno when the Zentorno was the dominant supercar um, on there. But this is the Osiris and sets a lap time of 123.1. Now, the Osiris, I actually expected more from this car on this particular track. Um, it's four-wheel drive. It's got a good amount of top speed. It's got really good acceleration because it being four-wheel drive. But it just feels a bit a bit fat on these uh, on these tight turns, and it, it does understeer quite a lot on the sort of downhill section of the mountain, which you'll see in a little bit. So that always is going to upset lap times. Um, the other thing as well with the Osiris is again it's 1.9 million, um, which again is is you know at the time it was very expensive, but considering to most supercars now it's actually well it's 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 not too bad considering it is a uh, you know a fast car at the end of the day, um, but it, it's a car that I expected just a bit more from this track. I thought it was going to be really good, um, especially down this section here. It just didn't really grip and it it didn't really allow me to put the full power down because. It would just oversteer and then it would just snap and this tight little chicane here it did sort of struggle a little bit on there but anyway it got a lap time we got a very respectable lap time of 123.1 it's the seventh fastest supercar in the game now up next we have which i caught by surprise the Turis sorry the zentorno right zentorno okay zentorno being the most i think nowadays the most respected car in the game literally the most respected car in the game because when this guy came out back in 2014 do you remember with like the content creator it was like whoa rockstar have broke the game it's too quick compared to the entity and you know and the turismo and for a while people just used to abuse the car and use it and then it got a bit boring to use but then since next gen arrived they actually tweaked the handling. It now sort of flicks out on the braking. The back end kicks out. It's a bit harder to drive, but then it's so rewarding. And I think I speak for most people on this subject, right? The Zentorno has got to be one of the most fun cars in the in the game to actually race with, you know. And that's saying something because, like I said, the Turismo and the FMJ, I think, are fantastic cars to drive. But the Zentorno, if you're in a racing battle, it's really good. You know, four-wheel drive, shoots out of corners, good acceleration. Not the best top speed, but shoots out of uh, corners, and it's just nimble. It's just really, really dirty. Still looks the part, and it's a fantastic car. It's the sixth fastest supercar on this particular track, which you know you've got to give it. You got to give it a handshake to that car. You got to give it a handshake. Up next, we have the X80 Proto. Now this car here is a touchy car because I made a video about this car when it first launched, right? Of how I didn't get along with it and I thought it was, you know, it's just a waste of money. And guess what? I still think it's a massive waste of money because this is the most expensive car in the game at 2.7 million, right? And it's the fifth fastest car in the game. When this car got launched, it looks like an alien that's given birth to like a plane or an F1 car from the back. And we all expected to do, you know, create major lap times with it, smash records with it, have that car that's just going to be OP in races, but it's not. It understeers a lot. It it just is too big for certain types of roads and, and, you know, on GTA. As you can see here, it's really, really light. So when you go over bumps and when you go over tracks that have got a bit of elevation, the car just sort of skips. It doesn't get the traction down, so it just, like, bounces along. Um... And it just it doesn't it just doesn't grip. It just does not grip. It's quick in a straight line, it's quick in acceleration, it sounds pretty nice, but it looks like a back to front F1 car, and for that reason, it's just not a car that I would recommend to actually go out and buy, especially for not 2.7 million when there's cheaper cars which are actually faster, look better, and able to give you more of a pleasurable pleasurable driving experience. In fifth place, right, we have the T20, the Another car that we sort of had major respect for when it first came out because 
when the Osiris came out, we were like, okay, fastest kind the game, you know, Osiris is beating the, uh, the Zentorno. That didn't last long because the T20 broke the Osiris's like, you know, sort of th uh, record in literally two weeks because these cars were released within two weeks of each other. So the T20 just broke its limelight and just said, you know what, thumb, you know, middle finger to you, thumbs up to me. I am the fastest car in the game, and it was. And to be fair with you, it still is the fastest normal sort of supercar. Because when I say normal, I mean a car that's actually like a road car supercar. As you'll see um, in the video coming up, you'll see the changes that GTA 5 has developed. But it's a fantastic car, guys. I would never sell this car um, in the game because it's just a really nice car to drive. You know, it costs, wait, I think it's 2.1 million. So... Not the most expensive car, but it did give you the option, well not the option, but it did have the active wing, which was a first for any car in the game. So that was actually that was actually really cool how Rockstar did that. So four fastest car, 122.8, great traction, great acceleration of it being four-wheel drive, but fantastic car on a track like this. In third place, we have the most recent supercar in the game, right? ETR1. This is basically just broken the sort of margin between the T20 and, you know, the next car because a 119 is a, an astonishing time. Considering, you know, the supercars like the Zentorno and the T20 were like getting 122, 23s. This car comes along, right, and gets a 1 minute 19. And the reason being, it's just got so much traction. You know, Rockstar have just engineered these car uh, to actually have so much traction in the game. And it just feels like a proper arc arcade like car. It's just one of those racing games that you you're on holiday or you're in the sort of shopping center and you see those car racing games like Fast and Furious. You go around the corner at 300 miles an hour and you just you know you, you nitrous it around the corner. It feels like that. I'm not gonna be. It feels a bit feels a bit fake. It feels a bit easy and it don't really reward you. But it's, again, you know, it's what you like and, you know, it's we've got to accept that there's these type of cars in the game. Possibly, yes, Rockstar should have put this type of car in a different class, such as a race car class. But that's just something we've got to live with. So it gets a 1 minute 19.154, third fastest supercar, until this car comes along. This is the Tyrus, right? Which brings... 1 minute 18.6 to the table, right? 1 minute 18.6. And I made a video about this car uh, quite recently, um, how it's actually an amazing car to drive, even though it's got so much traction and feels like the ETR1, a bit fake, a bit sort of arcadey, like proper arcadey. It does feel the best out of the sort of new generation supercars. And it's like, a, like I said, it's like a McLaren uh, F1 back in the day. Um, really, really nice looking car. Quite a long car, but very thin. Um, but great on these type of roads where you can actually... These type of cars, right, on city tracks with tight turns, they don't, they don't do well. They understeer and they're actually quite rubbish, right? Once you start picking up the speed... And once you start getting into like third, fourth gear and going flat out, you get actually more traction. It's a bit like real life, you know, the faster you go, the more downfall your car's creating, allowing you to go faster through the corner. That's what these cars are doing. That's what you've got to remember. So on on tracks like this, where you've got fast corners and fast roads, you're actually going to benefit more in a car like this than you are in a track like, for example, you know, that's just got like tight hairpins um, on there. Like the first half of the track on this car wasn't actually that quicker than a T20. As soon as they got into the next bit, that was it. That was it. And that was it. RE7B confirmed the fastest car in GTA 5. One minute 15. Let's just let's just think about that. One minute 15, right? The ETR1 got a one minute 19. We thought, okay. The Tyrus, a 1 minute 18. Okay, mate, calm down. You know, calm, get your hand, get your hand and walk off. This guy got a 1 minute 15.9. And this, again, was with tuna wheels. This is not with any glitch or anything like that. This is the fastest car in the game by some margin, right? By some margin. I mean, it's just absolutely insane how fast this car is. You just, you don't break in this car. 
you literally don't brake in this car. And like I said, the faster you go, the more downforce it has. So then you don't even have to brake even more. So it's just basically bending laws of physics within the game. But it's, it, it's you know, it's the fastest car. We've got to respect that. It's, like I said, it's like a Le Mans style car. Again, it should have been in a race class. But, you know, we, we have to accept that from Rockstar and what they've done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the difference between a, like, road supercar and the uh, sort of IE7B of what the fastest cars are like. As you can see here, they both start, and they're both quite similar in sort of the first section of the track. Okay, the RE7B has got a lot more power, so it's going to pull away, but it's not majorly differently. But now, as the time goes on throughout the track, the RE7B is basically just pulling. It's like the T20 is broken, it's in limp mode, and it's just not working properly. It's crazy to see the difference between a year in GTA Online. Last year, the T20 came out. This time, fastest car in the game. Roll on 360 days, and the RE7B is the fastest car in the game. But not only just by a second or two, by... I mean, 1 minute 15, guys. It's like 7 seconds quicker than a T20. 7 seconds around a 1 minute 20-ish on average track. So... It's just a different class whatsoever. But, guys, this is the fastest car in the game, the RE7B. Thank you so much for watching if you stuck through this video. I really do appreciate it. Like I said, the sports car comparison will be up next. I've got to do all that for you guys. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. And, you know, you can go back on this video and check which cars are best suited for you. Anyway, guys, like I said, massive support on the channel recently. Thank you so much for over 15,000 subscribers. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.